Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me as always. So, you've probably seen already that I've got some exciting news. For those of you that haven't seen my socials, I have been working on something in the last 12 months and I can't wait to reveal it to you. So join me on Saturday when I'll be able to tell you some more information and reveal exactly what I've been up to in the last 12 months. So, let's now crack on with the video. I'm using a smaller canvas and a very small cookie cutter and I'm going to lay the paints within the cookie cutter and lift it up to reveal the paint. I don't know if you've seen my autumnal twist that I released a couple of weeks ago, but what I decided to do was use some of my leftover paints to make a smaller piece with exactly the same colour palette, but using a different technique. One thing that I would say is whenever I layer my base on a canvas, I use various methods to do that. So sometimes I just use a palette knife, Sometimes I use my blow dryer. It really depends on what technique you're using and how fluid the base is that you're trying to coat with. So for this one, I use a palette knife, mainly because it's a smaller area to cover. If I was working on a larger canvas, I would tend to pour my paint on, swirl it around a bit, and then use my blow dryer to ensure that I've got a consistent layer. But as you can see here, I'm using just a small palette knife to spread that base color over. I also use a torch to get rid of any of the air bubbles. But to ensure that there's a consistent layer, I just tilt it and you'll see the excess paint or the puddles within that canvas move over the edge onto my table. By doing that, I'm enabled to kind of assure myself that the base colour and the base coat that I've got on that canvas is consistent. So I'm placing my cookie cutter, which is a very small star, just in the middle of the canvas. And I'm putting some paint around that edge just to help with the flow and the movement of that paint when it's released. And I release the paint by lifting up the cookie cutter slowly in an up and downward fashion. So what I'm doing, as I said, I'm using some of my leftover paints from my autumnal twist, and I'm just filling that cookie cutter with the different tones. And then once the paint has filled that cookie cutter, I will just lift it off the surface gently, slow motion, up, down, up, down. And by doing that, I'm just releasing the paint from underneath and the paint will go underneath that surface paint that you've seen me surround the cookie cutter with. So here we go. So just lift up gently and release and then down and then release. And you'll see the paint has been put within the cookie cutter, release underneath the cookie cutter and onto the canvas itself. And that's when you start making those patterns. And that's when you'll see your paint start spreading across your canvas. Now I'll do this a couple of times, but something to be really mindful of is the volume of paint you've got on such a small canvas area. Obviously, if this was a larger canvas, I wouldn't be so worried. But what I've got to bear in mind is the paint that I'm putting onto that canvas will need to be stretched as well to make a, a design to, to look at the composition. So I only do this twice. I don't want to overfill my canvas and waste a lot of paint. There's a bubble right in the middle there. So what I do, I'm just gonna pop that. There we go. It actually looks like a flower, but I'm not gonna keep that design as it is. I'm going to torch just to get rid of the air bubbles. 
and then I'm going to stretch it out and I'm going to stretch it out over the full canvas. For this piece, I don't want any negative space. So as I stretch, I go from corner to corner. And as always, when I pick up my canvas, I get to feel how heavy the base is. So that tells me where those puddles of paint are. Obviously, we know for this version, it's all centered in the middle. But as I stretch from corner to corner, I do work the paint back into the middle to be able to stretch it out to the other corners. And this is really the point that you kind of have to think about your composition. If I wanted some negative space, maybe I'd stop now. But as I said, my intention was to ensure that the full base was covered with the colour. So as I tilt, and I apologise that it sometimes goes off screen so you can't see it, <laughs> I'm tilting all the way over the edges, but then I move my paint back into the middle. That's because one, I want a consistent layer of paint on my canvas so it doesn't crack and graze as it dries, and two, it's about the composition and the overall look for me. This was a really fun piece and it's a very small canvas. I think if I remember, it's an eight by eight inch canvas. So fairly small or smaller to what I'm used to working with. But as you can see, using the same color palette, so you might want to watch my autumnal twist because I did a Dutch pour technique, but using the same color palette, but a different technique can have such a different outcome and result. and the dried version didn't disappoint. It really kept its vibrancy, but to ensure that it has more of a gloss finish, I will coat this piece with some Winsor & Newton high gloss varnish. I always use a spray varnish for those that ask. And yeah, I'm really happy with it. I'll leave you with some close up shots. And remember guys, I've got a really big announcement coming on Saturday. So please check out all my socials on Saturday because I'd love for you to learn what I've been up to over the last 12 months. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, your support is really valued. I, I really value every single one of you. So thank you so much and have a great week ahead. Take care, everyone. Bye.